Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about our paper detecting numerical bugs in neural network architectures. This is a joint work of Peking University, National University of Defense Technology, and the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. I'm Yu Hao, and I'm currently a second year PhD student at the University of Wisconsin Madison. We will first talk about the background and motivation of our paper. We'll first talk about what are the neural network architectures and what are numerical bugs. Neural network architecture is just a piece of code that specifies the different connection between different neurons with various uh, neural network operations. After training, we'll get a neural network model with a set of unexplainable parameters on its edges. Existing work focuses on testing, verification, bug detection on the model level of neural network. However, in this work, we propose to detect a bug at the architecture level. So the question arises that why neural network architecture? Well, first, bugs at model level are difficult to fix because neural network models are trained from magic. So the fixes on, on the parameters are unexplainable to developers. However, the fix on the code are more familiar to developers. Second, bugs in architectures may cause failures in training. So once a failure occurs, it will invalidate the, the trained model. So um, days, weeks, months of training will be wasted. Detecting numerical bugs at the architecture level can avoid this kind of time and uh, resource waste. Third, um, we can provide quality assurance that needs to be provided for architectures if we detect bugs on the architecture level. Um, we assume there is an architecture vendor who provides a neural network architecture to many developers, and these developers train many different um, neural network models with their own data sets and incorporate these models into their software systems. So for the architectural vendors, they don't know what kind of model will the developers get. So um, the verification of bug detection on model level are not applicable here. And we need to detect bugs on the architectural level. Numerical bugs are bugs leading to errors in your numerical operations. So the bugs can be um, as such as not a number, infinity, or crashes during training or inference. Here is an example of numerical bugs. Um, we have a tensor HFC. Um, its elements are in the range of minus 100 to 100, and it comes uh, comes through a softmax operations, and the outputs of some operation can contain zero. So this will be problematic because once zero is feeding to the log operations, um, there will be a not a number, so it's a numerical bug. And the idea is that we can use static analysis to infer the range of these tensors and check whether the input to the uh, unsafe operations contains unsafe values. For example, uh, we can check whether the input to the log to log operation contains zero. So we introduce the workflow of our work. Um, we first have a neural network architecture and we extract a computation graph from it. We perform static analysis on the um, on tensors and to infer th their ranges. Then we check the unsafe operations like log and or exponential function. Um, if we find a function can be problematic, we'll issue a warning on that operation. Um, otherwise, the operation is uh, verified to be safe. We'll use abstract interpretation in our static analysis. So static analysis is used to deal with implementing many possible inputs and parameters for an, an architecture. 
Suppose variable x can be any value between 0 to 1. We can just use an interval to represent it. Here, sigma x means the range of x is 0 to 1. Two questions arise. First, how to abstract tensors, which are the main component in the neural network architecture. Second, how can we improve the precision of interval obstruction? And we will answer this in the next few slides. So first, we propose a new technique called tensor partitioning for obstructing tensors in the neural network architectures. Second, um, we use interval obstruction with a fine quartz relation to improve the precision. Before talking about tensor partitioning, we first talk about two techniques, tensor expansion and tensor smashing. Existing works um, propose array expansion and array smashing. So we adapt this work to tensors because tensors are just um, high dimensional arrays. Tensor expansion instantiates every element. It's precise but not scalable. While well, tensor smashing smashes a tensor into one element. It is scalable, but not precise. We'll go through an example to illustrate these two approaches. As a first statement, we declare a two by two tensor. Um, all the elements are in the range of minus one to zero. As a second statement, we split A to two column vectors. Next, we fill A2 with one. Then we add A2 to A1 by element-wise addition. So this means each element in A2 will be added to A1 at the corresponding position. Finally, we concatenate A1 and A2 um, to form a new two by two tensor B. So tensor partitions instantiates every element in a tensor. So as we can see, um, it is instantiates every element at an interval. As the third statement, we fill A2 with one. And as the fourth statement, we um, change the range of A1 from minus one to one to one to uh, to zero to one because we add one to a one. And as last statement, we have a uh, two by two, uh, two by two tensors B. A, a tensor smashing smashes a tensor into one element. So as we can see, each um, tensor is represented by one interval. And most importantly, as a last statement, we have the range of B is um, zero to one. Um, this is less precise than the result of tensor expansion because um, in tensor smashing, we lose track of uh, the internal relation inside um, each tensor. Tensor partitioning combines the strengths of these two, uh, two techniques. It is scalable and precise enough. So the motivation of tensor partitioning is that we find many elements of a tensor are subject to the same operations. So if we can group these, um, these elements into one abstract element, we can reduce the number of elements that we keep track of. So it can provide opportunity to reduce analyzed effort. Another observation is that some operations like concatenate and split provide partition positions. So we can get, we can easily get these partition positions because they come free. Tensor partitioning partitions the tensor into a set of disjoint parts and they smash each part into one element. So we will go through the previous uh, example again. So at the first four statements, we can see each element is represented by one interval. Um, this is because all the elements in this tensor are subject to the same operation. But in the last statement, the tensor B is smashed in, uh, is partitioned into two parts. 
Um, this is because these two parts come, are subject to different operations. So the tensor B is partitioned into two parts or two partitions. Well, the first partition has a row index zero to uh, one and column index zero. And the second partition has row index zero one and column index one. Um, we also compare the results to um, tensor expansion and tensor smashing. So compared to tensor expansion, um, tensor partition is more scalable because it, it keeps track of um, fewer um, elements. Compared to tensor smashing, um, tensor partition is more precise. Um, let's now talk about a fine correlation. So the motivation is that we find there are many element-wise affine operations in competition graphs. So in this case, affine correlation is more precise than sole interval obstruction. We'll use an example to show why um, the sole interval obstruction is less precise. So in this example, for in the first line, we declare two variables A and B. And as a second statement, A plus B is assigned to X, and A minus B is assigned to Y. And then um, x plus y is assigned, assigned to z. So we can, um, so we can apply uh, interval arithmetic to these um, statements, and uh, and we can got uh, get the range of z is minus one to three. So this is imprecise because if we carefully examine these statements, for example, z is equal to x plus y. And we can sort of cancel the plus b in x and minus b in y so that z is actually equals um, 2a. So uh, the, because the range of a is 0 to 1, 2a is actually 0 to 2, which is more, which is more precise than this, uh, this interval. So this imprecision is because interval obstruction obstructs away the relation between x, y, z, and a and b. We can use a fine correlation to improve this uh, imprecision. So uh, a fine correlation keeps track of the linear relation between um, the assigned variables and all previous variables. For example, at the second statement, um, x equals a plus b, and that's the third statement, y equals a minus b. It's the last statement, z equals x plus y, and we plug in x equals to a plus b inside the, um, inside the equation, and also y equals a minus b inside the equation, and we can simplify this uh, affine correlation as z equals 2a. So from this um, equation, we can infer that, well, um, the um the the range of z is actually um zero to one plus zero to one equals zero to two. So let's move on to our evaluation. Um our evaluation contains a set of a collection of neural network textures. So um the first set of collection contains nine buggy architecture from previous study. And the second set contains um, 48 real-world architectures from TensorFlow models containing different neural network architectures in various research domains. So notice that um, the second data sets, um, we don't know in advance whether there is numerical bugs or not. So this is our main result of our framework. So our framework contains two, mainly contains two techniques, um, tensor obstruction and numerical obstruction. And we can instantiate our framework to different uh, configurations. For example, our tool debar is, is instantiated from our framework by uh, using tensor partitioning as the tensor obstruction techniques and a fine correlation as the numerical obstruction techniques. So our tool achieves 93% accuracy. So accuracy is computed by um, 
true positive plus true negative divided by all the operation that we checked. Um, all the architecture are analyzing three minutes and uh, with 12 seconds on average. So it also achieves 100% accuracy on, on the first data set, which, is, which contains nine buggy architectures. And we can also replace a fine correlation with so interval obstruction, but the accuracy will drop to 80% uh, with the same similar uh, time performance. We can also replace tensor partitioning with tensor expansion and tensor smashing. So recall that tensor expansion instantiates every element in a tensor. So it is um, unscalable. Uh, you can see 33 architecture times out for more than 30 minutes. And on the rest of 24 architecture, the bar does not lose any accuracy. Array smashing smashes and tensor into one element. Um, it is less precise than tensor expansion. So as you can see, uh, it achieves 87% accuracy. Uh, also, the time performance is similar to the bar. We also find bugs in real-world architectures. We find 11 buggy statements in the code repository, and we submit all the pull requests, and three buggy statements have been repaired by the developers. In summary, our work proposed to detect numerical bugs in neural network architectures, and we designed two obstruction techniques for analyzing neural network architectures. And we also collect 57 competition graphs for future research. We also point out some future research directions, for example, how to analyze the dynamic competition graphs. Um, our current work focuses on static competition graphs, but with the dynamic competition graph become more and more popular, we think this is an interesting direction. Also, how to map the buggy operations to the buggy code statements. Um, currently, our tool will point out the buggy operations in the competition graph, but how to map them to the real code statements uh, can be seen as another improvement of our, of our tool. So with that, I'll end my uh, presentation, and thanks for your attention.